welcome to Season 3 of the Baby Names Podcast, naming the world one baby at a time. Here are your hosts, the Moss Sisters. I'm Jennifer Moss. And I'm Mallory Moss. And we're the founders of BabyNames.com. And we're sisters too. Maybe. <laughs> oh, that's true. You never know. <laughs> So our first segment is interesting names we found since the last episode. And I have a doozy. A couple in our community had a new baby boy and they named him Yarrow. Y-A-R-R-O-W. Now a Yarrow is a plant with a yellow or white flower that is known for its medicinal uses. It's a nature name, just a little bit different. And then a couple cool names I found from TV credits are Caprice, a dictionary name and also a model of car by Chevrolet, and Bruton. Now, I have a cat named Brutus, so I'm kind of liking Bruton. Bruton is the name of a town in England, so it's probably a habitational surname used for people who lived in or near the city. It literally means settlement or town near the Bru River. To me, it seems like a robot name. I am Bruton from the planet Bruton. <laughs> it does. It does. You're right. Okay. <laughs> well, I heard the name Barley this week. B-A-R-L-E-Y. I know it's a little grainy like wheat or oats, but I think it could work. I also heard the name Serafina. I think that's really pretty. It means seraphim, S-E-R-A-P-H-I-M, or an angelic being associated with light, purity, and enthusiasm. I think that has a great meaning. It can be spelled with a P-H or an F. I love Serafina. And you can call her Sarah for short. Yeah, exactly. Or (laughs) Finey. Or Finey. And I also wanted to give a shout out to little Klaus Wolfgang McDonald, who came out (laughs) last Thursday, October 15th. Congrats to the McDonald family and welcome to the world, Klaus McDonald. Welcome, Klaus. Now, mom would call that a Juan Epstein name, and Juan Epstein was a character in the 1970s sitcom Welcome Back, Cotter, and his name was supposed to be the joke because he was half Latino, half Jew. Kind of like my daughter, actually. (laughs) That's why my mom wouldn't let me name her Kelly Mendoza, because she said that's a Juan Epstein name. Well, I think that's really antiquated. I think anyone can name their baby anything they want. I know. I know. Of course, that was 28 years ago. So Miranda was 28 years ago. Welcome back. Cotter was about 48 years ago. Right. I know. I know. (laughs) That's true. And speaking of character names, our highly anticipated topic of the week is Harry Potter names. Harry Potter Okay. I apologize in advance for my sister's bad British accent. No, that's what they say. Harry Potter. Okay. Okay. Uh, Now, we know there's been a lot of controversy about the personal views of author J.K. Rowling. And I'd like to add that babynames.com does not support nor condone her statements. And we fully support the LGBTQIA community. Yes. Let's get on with it. Today, we're concentrating on the characters within the fictional world of Harry Potter and their names. Oh, and I haven't read or seen any of the movies, so I'm coming at this from a names standpoint, and Mallory will come at this from the storytelling standpoint. That's true. So I have seen every movie and have read every book, I will tell you that it's been a little while, so I may make some mistakes, but we are excited, excited to hear from our listeners any corrections or input that they want to give to us. Absolutely. All right, well, everybody's favorite wizard probably needs no introduction. Harry Potter was originally a series of novels. Yeah, the first Harry Potter book was released in 1997 in the UK, and 1998 here in the U.S. The first movie came out in 2001, and the last one, not counting Fantastic Beasts, was 2011. 
The author, J.K. Rowling, not only named her characters, but also renamed herself. I think we talked about this in the pseudonyms episode. Mm -hmm. The story goes that she did not feel that a female author's name would appeal to her target audience of young male readers. So, ironically, she created a gender-neutral pen name, J.K. Rowling. Her real first name is Joanne, and the K stands for Kathleen, her grandmother's name on her father's side. So the basic story is that Harry Potter is a young boy who one day gets an invitation from an owl to go to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. What ensues is several years of magical experiences and fighting ultra bad guys, including the biggest, baddest bad guy of all. Voldemort. That's as much as I know about the series. <laughs> I know about the owl. Okay, in this story, characters refer to Voldemort as he who must not be named because they believe if you say his name, it will manifest his presence. Kind of like Candyman, Candyman, Candyman. Remember that? Yeah, movie? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Voldemort's name was self-given, but his birth name was Tom Marvolo Riddle, itself an anagram for I am Lord Voldemort. Wait, wait, wait. So his name is Tom? <laughs> yes. Tom. No wonder he changed it. That doesn't sound so scary. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tom. Boo. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Gosh, I've said his name so much now that I'm expecting him to appear outside my window. According to Jacob Shansian in his article for Insider, Rowling used names that have specific linguistic and historical roots. If we look at the name Harry, we immediately think of Prince Harry or the many other Henrys in English royal history. His last name, Potter, on the other hand, is a stark contrast to royalty. It's simply an occupational surname for pot makers or potters. And as we said in episode 16, occupational surnames, they have become popular now for real baby names. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the contrast of the royal warrior Harry and the common person is a theme that carries throughout the book series. Mm -hmm. Harry sees himself as a normal boy and never believes that he can be the hero or the warrior that people want him to be. Although, of course, he proves himself to be that warrior time and time again. So his pal is Ronald Weasley. Ronald is a Scottish form of the Old Norse name Ragnvaldr, which consists of the element regin, meaning advice counsel, and valdr, meaning power or ruler. Naming characters is one of the most important aspects of character building and can say a lot about their backstory. Now, in contemporary literature, we try not to get too literal, like it would be awkward to use outright caractonyms, for example, but you can use elements that imply a character trait, kind of like Weasley, meaning his weasel-y, weasel-like. Another example Mort is a Latin word element that means death. So having it in Voldemort implies that he's deadly. Right. And Ron's full name is Ronald Bilius Weasley. Mm -hmm. Bilius being after his uncle Bilius. The word Bilius means full of bile in the dictionary. Interesting. Does he ever vomit in the stories? Not that I remember, but it would fit his character. But he is okay. someone who is very scared a lot, but really, mm -hmm. truly courageous in the long oh, run. Oh, cool. Okay. Now, I think we discussed this in a previous episode that the name Hermione is very close to the literary term heroine, female hero, only a couple letters off. And I think that's what JK was going for, plus the alliteration of Harry and Hermione, both starting with H, have R in the middle, and the E sound at the end automatically couples them. How are you pronouncing Hermione? Hermione. No, it's Hermione. It's not Hermione. Okay, all right. Hermione. It's a four-syllable name. In the show, it's Hermione. Maybe because of the British accent. Right. Hermione. Hermione. Yeah, maybe. Just like Aya instead of Aria. Right. It depends on your dialect. 
Right. Well, the dialect of Harry Potter is it's Hermione. Hermione. So. Well, okay. So still, it starts with an H. It's got the R in the middle and the E sound at the end. So it's automatically paired with Harry. Okay. Well, Hermione is a character in Shakespeare's A Winter Tale. The name goes all the way back to Greek mythology. Hermione was the daughter of Helen of Troy and King Menelaus. Mm. Rowling said in one interview that she purposely made Hermione's name unusual as she did not want any little girls to be made fun of when the book was published. Well, how would they be made fun of? Isn't she a good character? She's a wonderful character, but new girls named after Hermione will always be associated with her. So if it were Mallory, the same thing would happen. I think it is a little less likely to happen when there are more people with that name, however, like Harry. One name that is definitely worth mentioning is Hagrid. It is an old English word for having had a bad night, kind of like hungover. Hmm. Since Hagrid likes his drinks, he also suffered his fair share of hangovers. I also have to mention Draco Malfoy, whose name essentially translates into evil dragon. <laughs> yes, yes, Bal, Mal, Mal means bad or evil, like the name Mallory, which is usually defined as ill-omened. Hmm, that's for sure. So we wanted to do a survey of some iconic Harry Potter names, and we asked our respondents to rank them in order of which they would actually use for a real baby name. So let's go through the names that we put in this survey. All right. So first we have... Albus. It's a Latin name, meaning white. And Albus Dumbledore was definitely the white knight, all that is pure and good. Okay. Bellatrix. Bella means beautiful, and Trix is a Latin name element changing a name to female, similar to like E-L-L-E-L -L -E -L, or just putting an A at the end of certain names nowadays. I think it's also used as a homonym for Trix, like trick or treat. Oh, like Trix the cereal? Like Trix the cereal, yes. <laughs> but Bella Trix can be beautiful, but she can also be tricky. I see, okay. Cedric, possibly a name invented by Sir Walter Scott for a character in his 1819 novel, Ivanhoe. Another theory is that Cedric is an alternate spelling of the name Cerdic, C-E-R-D-I-C, the name of the first king of Saxon Wessex, UK, reigning from 519 to 534, current era. Well, Cedric Diggory was an elite athlete, a Quidditch champion. So that makes sense. All right. Cornelius means horn, possibly used as an occupational surname for those guys who play official flourishes like do 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 Okay. So we also mentioned Draco, who is indeed everyone's least favorite boy in the series. Why? Almost always he's Harry's nemesis competitor oh, in everything that they okay. do and he's very mean and nasty he reminds me of king joffrey from game of thrones oh okay so he's like joffrey like oh, yes. all right i get it and his name means dragon literally right all right then there's fleur which is just the french word for flower and it's fleur de la croix Ooh, okay does she come from france I don't know. Whatever France is in the <laughs> Harry Potter world. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't I don't think they mention France. Who is she? She's one of his, Harry's friends. Oh, okay. Then there's Ginevra, which has the same root as my name, the Welsh Gwenhwithar, which means white wave, white complected, or white phantom. Phantom, that's for sure. Like, we already talked about Hagrid. Now, she created the name for the series, possibly from the word Haggard, as we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that Haggard is always tired of putting up with the children, but of course loves all of them. Okay. And Harry itself is a nickname for Henry, which means ruler of the home. Harry is definitely a ruler of sorts. In fact, he's the prince of the novel. Like I said, I have a feeling that there's a bit of a nod to Prince Harry in this. Yeah, most probably. Hermione is a Greek name, the female form of the name 
Hermes. Lucius means light. Then there's Luna. Yay! Moon. It's the Italian or Spanish word for moon, literally. She definitely acts celestial, Luna. She's very spacey. Now, do you think that it was definitely Harry Potter who brought that name onto the charts? Yes. Interesting. So that's the name that has had most effect, probably. I don't know. I think we'll have to look at the list of what people love. Okay, let's keep going. Marvolo. It was a created name, probably from the word marvelous. And Marvolo, I think, was, you know, sometimes J.K. Rowling would do a sarcastic name. Oh, okay. (laughs) You know, so I think... You know, he was anything but marvelous. Okay. Then there's Minerva, which has an unknown meaning. But Minerva was the Roman goddess of wisdom and war. Is Minerva warlike in the series? Or is she wise? I don't know who Minerva is. Well, there's Myrtle or Morning Myrtle, a whiny ghost. I think Myrtle is the perfect name. And also another rare one. So the make fun of factor is lessened. Yeah, and it's one of those 100-year names that was popular back at the early 20th century, you know, like... uh, Henrietta. Mabel and Henrietta, exactly. So I can see Myrtle coming back into style. It's also a nature name. It is? What does it mean? I think it's a flower or a plant, Myrtle plant. Oh, oh. Yeah. Then there's Narcissa, which obviously comes from the words narcissistic or narcissus. It's the connotation is the love of oneself, but it literally means numb or numbness because it comes from a plant that has a sedative effect. That's really interesting because... Narcissists are numb to other people's feelings. Ah, cool. There you go. There's Neville, which means new town. It's a habitational surname. And I I think Neville is a character who is extraordinarily courageous, but acts like he is afraid of everything. Okay, now we have Petunia, which is a flower name of the nightshade family. And I always uh, am reminded of Petunia Pig Mm -hmm. from Looney Tunes. Now, I think that reference might have aged out already, but uh, Petunia was Porky's girlfriend. (laughs) Yes, and I think if I remember correctly, Petunia was the portly wife of the family taking care of Harry at the beginning of the movie. Uh, so, and okay. she was a really horrible character. So that is, mm. that adds up. Phineas is a Hebrew name meaning Nubian or dark skinned. And we all know that Phineas, the name came onto the charts after Julia Roberts named her son Phineas. That's true. And Ron, we talked about. Rubius is the middle name of Hagrid. And that means red. Potter, we talked about. Right. Severus comes from the Latin meaning severe. Of course, Severus Snape is simply strict. Say that five times fast. Ooh, who is he? Well, Severus is an interesting character because I don't want to do any spoilers for those of you who are going to be so excited by our learned <laughs> evaluation <laughs> that you're going to go out and read I the book. I might watch it or read it. You I'm should. Now. <laughs> read, read the book. The book is a great place to begin. The first book. It's like reading The Wizard of Oz for the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's really very good. Let's see. So Severus Snape is a um, teacher at the academy, the school for witchcraft and wizardry. And you never know throughout the whole movie until you do whether he's good or bad. Oh, interesting. And so we have two more to go. Sirius means burning brightly, and it's the name of the brightest star in our sky of the constellation Canis Major. It's also called the Dog Star, and it was named after the Egyptian god Osiris. And there's also Victor, V-I-K-T-O-R, 
which means victorious with the Slavic spelling K. And we know that Victor was also, I believe, a Quidditch champion, so that makes sense. Ah, so he was a victor. Now, I have a question before we go over the survey results. What do you think of Hogwarts? I mean, a hog and a wart. Why is the connotation so, quote, ugly for Hogwarts? Maybe it's another ironic name, but it's definitely a school that has a lot of history, both good and bad. In fact, Most of it is very dark, if you think about it. I never thought about this question before, but it has a very dark history because, of course, Voldemort, sorry, Voldemort, was a student, or Tom Riddle was a student. So it's got warts, basically. Yes, exactly. Okay, so do you want to announce the survey results for what people would actually name their babies? Yes. Well, I, I'm having trouble reading number one. Ha ah, ha ha. Old joke already. <laughs> That's <laughs> Luna. Two is Cedric. Three is Fleur. Four is Hermione. Five is Harry. Six is Lucius. or Lu- Yeah, Lucius. Seven is Draco, which I think is really wow. interesting that that would get so high. Okay. And then Bellatrix. Really? Top mm-hmm. 10, Bellatrix. Okay. Eight. Well, look at nine, Ginevra. Yeah. 10, Cornelius. 11 is Victor. 12 is Albus. 13 is Phineas. 14 is Minerva. 15 is Neville. 16 is Petunia. Oh my gosh. Interesting. I know. Okay. 17, Narcissa. 18, Ron. So Narcissa over Ron? That's yes. interesting, too. Okay. Yes. Myrtle. Now, there were only 25 on the list. Okay. That people right. had to choose from. So now we're at the end where no one really likes these names. So the last five or six. Okay. Yeah. So Potter is 20th. Okay. 21st is Sirius. 22 is Marvolo, which Mm -hmm. makes sense, so. 23 is Hagrid, because, you know, that's like naming a baby Hodor, honestly. Uh, I get that. Hodor, Hodor. Hodor. Oh, Hodor. 24 is Severus. Okay. And 25 is Rubius. I'm surprised that the last one is Rubius. You know, not something like Narcissa or Draco. Right. I thought Draco would be way at the bottom because he's such a bad guy. I know. But Rubius? What kind of character is Rubius again? Rubius is awesome. It's the middle name of Hagrid. Oh, right. Hagrid's one of the greatest characters in the book. But no one likes his middle name. The top boy name was Cedric, as in Cedric Diggory, the handsome Quidditch champion, Played by Robert Pattinson, by the way. Oh, he was in it? Mm-hmm. The first one. Or He's the first one was Cedric. He's Batman now. Is he? Yeah. I didn't He's know that. Next. He's the next Batman. You didn't uh, know that? Where no. have you been living? <laughs> um, it, you know, it makes sense, obviously, that the top name was Luna, since that's trending as an actual baby name. Which reminds me, we got a message on our message line this week. And I want to play it for you. Hello, ladies. My name is Bob. I am a loyal listener to the Baby Names podcast. Um, I just had to weigh in on this whole Luna situation. I agree with Jennifer. I think it sounds like a lunatic. And I would never allow anybody in my family to name their child with the name L-U-N-A, Luna. That would be an N-O-No. So anyway, keep it up, ladies. Have a great show. All right, all right, Bob, with your Chicago accent. Well, thanks, Bob, for listening and for agreeing with me. So, Hey, uh, thanks, Jennifer, for pretending you're Bob. I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay. It sounds nothing like me. Yeah, all right. Well, so we can't forget to mention the prequel to the Harry Potter series, Fantastic Beasts, which takes place before the Harry Potter series in New York City. 
Fantastic Beasts has some great names, too. It's the story of Newt Scamander, who is the eventual author of the Hogwarts School of Witching and Wizardry, quote, standard textbook. Now, that sounds like a very reptile-like name, Newt Scamander. Sounds like Salamander. Remember when you had a Newt named Sir Isaac? Sir Isaac. <laughs> Sir Isaac. Sir Isaac. You mean Sir Isaac? Sir Isaac, yes, Sir Isaac. Yeah, he ran away and then I found his dead carcass under my bed. Aw, poor Sir Isaac. Clever name, though, for a high school kid. Other interesting Fantastic Beasts name include poor Pintina, or Tina Goldstein, and her sister Queenie Goldstein. There are Chastity, Modesty, Credence, and Mary Lou Barebone. That's like our family. Everyone had really simple names, and then there came me. And in this list of four girls, it's all expectation names, and then Mary Lou. You know what's interesting, though? Poor Pintina being called Tina, reminds me of Tina Fey, whose real name is Elizabeth Stamatina. I did not know that. Yeah. Is Stamatina a family name? I don't know. Mm. I'll have to ask her. Okay, you do that. As I said before, one name I really like is Serafina, like Serafina Pickery, who is president of Magical Creatures USA, or M-A-C USA, the equivalent of the Ministry of Magic. There's also Percival Graves, Narlac, G-N-A-R-L-A-C-K, for any of you considering Narlac, the goblin, Langdon Shaw, and Lita Lestrange. I like the name Lita, L-E-T-A. She does do a lot of alliterative names, too. Oh, yes. Severus Snape, Lita Lestrange. Mm Mm-hmm. Let's not forget Johnny Depp's character, too, Gellert Grindelwald. Jennifer, what is your favorite name from Fantastic Beasts? I like Vinda Rosier. I I don't know if it's Rosier or Rosier, who was played by Poppy Corby Tuk Tuech. And I love the name Bernadette, played by Mikkel Brown. Bernadette was an American witch who worked for the Magical Congress of the United States as an executioner. But Bernadette is one of my sisters from my second family, and she's a doctor. Oh, okay. Well, there you have it. Harry Potter names. And I sincerely apologize again for Mallory's horrific British accent. Harry Potter! Okay. Anyway, there are several wikis out there that have infinite information on this topic. And if you have anything to add or find a great name that we've missed, write us at podcast at babynames.com. Please do. And now it's time for Celebrity Baby News. <laughs> Surfer Bethany Hamilton has announced that she is pregnant with baby number three. Her husband is Adam Dirks. They already have two sons, Tobias, age five, and Wesley, age two. Bethany has been the subject of movies and books about her teenage trauma of being attacked by a shark. She actually lost her arm. Yeah. She wrote about the experience herself, and she's also written children's books. That's cool. This is great photo of her surfing while she was pregnant with her first child Um, and yeah she's an amazing person speaking of harry potter the actress who played lavender brown hey that's a name that we forgot Um, her (laughs) name is jesse cave she had a baby with husband comedian alfie brown they named him abraham benjamin with the nickname bam bam (laughs) bam that's i've never heard that before abraham bam benjamin Now, that's a cute nickname. They already have two older children, Donnie, age six, and Margot, age four. All right. Donnie. That's interesting. (laughs) Is it just Donnie, I wonder? I don't know. Hilary Duff and husband musician Matthew Coma, K-O-M-A, have announced that they are expecting a baby in 2021. This is their second child together, Banks Violet Bear was born in 2018. Jen, what did you think about the name Banks? I think it was on my least favorite list. It was Banks Bear. 
I don't know. I mean, of course, it's another one of those surnames that have become first names, but I think it's highly unusual for a girl not to say that you can't use a surname for a first name, like Madison, which took off and became number one. But it'll be interesting to see what Hillary and Matthew name their second child to see if it's another gender neutral name. Yes, definitely. Two updates from the last podcast. Megan Trainer announced that her baby with actor Daryl Sabara is is going to be a boy and for quarterback Patrick Mahomes however he is going to have a girl. Mina Suvari and husband Michael Hope have announced that they are having a baby. They also told us that the Paul is told us did they tell us did they call us on the phone <laughs> they also said announced <laughs> announced that the baby is due this spring and will be a boy how exciting. Well, Mina, if you want to call us when you have your baby, feel free. Nicki Minaj and husband Kenneth Petty, whose baby is born at the end of September, had a girl. The news was released when they received congratulations online, so it was not formally announced. But I guess you could say it was leaked by friends. That's right. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and wife Amy just had their second child. It's a girl. They named her Nicole this is their, it's so nice to see a regular name. <laughs> you know? They named her Nicole. This is their second daughter. The first daughter was born in 2018 and is named Isla Rose. Isla. I like Isla. I think it's Isla, though. That's the more common pronunciation. Hmm. Anyway, Ashley Tisdale from High School Musical has announced the gender of her baby. It's going to be a girl. She and her husband, composer and musician Christopher French, couldn't be happier. Now, I had a friend who lived around the corner from Ashley, and so me and Miranda used to stalk her house in Toluca Lake. But the only thing we saw was her cute little dog peeking out the window. (laughs) All right, that's a little creepy. (laughs) <laughs> Tennis player Taylor Townsend has announced that she is expecting, unbeknownst to her, she was pregnant in her last tournament. Ooh. Well, let me rephrase that. Unbeknownst to her at the time, she was pregnant right. <laughs> in her last tournament. Taylor is due March 2021. We will be sure to bring you more news as we learn it. Yeah, and Hoda Kobe, host of the Today Show, and fiancé Joel Schiffman have announced that they have filed the paperwork for her third adoption. Hoda's first two children are named Haley Joy, adopted in 2017, and Hope Catherine, adopted in 2019. I wonder if her third child will have an H name, too. Singer-songwriter Mickey Guyton and husband attorney Grant Savoy are going to have a boy. The couple who married in June 2017 are thrilled. The news was announced in a feature in People magazine, which mentions that the baby is due in February. Tyler Hubbard of Florida Georgia Line and wife Haley Stommel had their baby, and it's a boy. He was born on September 24th and is named Atlas Roy. There's that Atlas name again. They have two older children, a boy named Luca Reed and a girl, Olivia Rose. What do you think of Atlas, Mal? I'm not a fan of Atlas, and I'm not a fan of Atticus. Yeah, those are very similar names, but I think Atlas is going to hit the top ten. That's my prediction. It's becoming super popular. I'm not a fan Let's ask Bob. Bob, call (laughs) us back and let us know what you think of the name Atlas, please. Wait a minute. He's coming to my head right now. Oh, yeah. Yes. Hello, Jennifer and Mallory. This is Bob's uncle. Oh. Smedley. And I would like to say that Atlas is a horrible name. All right. Thanks, Bob's (laughs) uncle. Thanks, Bob, your uncle. Okay. And now it's time for our final segment, Baby Names Q&A, where we take questions from you, our listeners. Here's the first one. Hi, Jennifer and Mallory. I love the name Junia, J-U-N-I-A, but I was unable to find out much about it. Meaning origin? I know it's a Bible name, though. It sounds like Julia, but with an N. Can you help me out? Sincerely, Leona. Hmm. So it probably comes from the root Juno, which in Roman religion was the chief goddess 
and female counterpart to Jupiter, resembling the Greek Hera. And she was the goddess of what, Mel? Love and marriage. Love and marriage. So Junia probably comes from Juno. So that's the meaning of Junia, Leona. And I think it's a beautiful name. I'm going to put it in the database. Junia. Yes. Okay, why don't you read the second one, Mel? Hi, Jennifer and Mallory. A few months ago, my younger sister and I were talking about names that we like for children. It's very common in our family to use family names as middle names, as hers is Rose after my grandmother's middle and mine is Elizabeth after my aunt's first. She said that she would love to name her future son Elias Jack after my grandfather Jack, not John, and I have been obsessed with that ever since. Just wanted to share. Love the podcast. Thanks for your time. Peyton Steduhar. P.S. She has a P.S. I'm well aware that my last name is a wreck. So if you could shed some light on the origin of that, I would love it. Well, let's first answer her question. I like Elias Jack after her grandfather. You can certainly put Jack in the middle spot in a name, even though it is a nickname for John. So I agree that that would be a beautiful name. Yeah, I think Jack is fine. Cool. I have no comments other than it's a fine middle name. Okay, so on to your last name. Now, I'm going to spell it for people. S-T-A-J-D-U-H-A-R. And I asked Peyton how she pronounced it, and she said Steduhar. So I can imagine that you've had problems pronouncing your last name for people your whole life. But it is not a wreck. It's just from a foreign language. Now, Americans have difficulty with foreign language names, period. The original pronunciation is Steiduhar, and Steiduhar families are from, drumroll please, Croatia, and it's primarily from the Verbosco area. Now, most Croatians with the surname Steiduhar were born in Zagreb and Karlovac. In fact, one out of every two people who live in the town of Rosarto have the surname Steiduhar. So if I was you, Peyton, I'd go to Rosarto and everyone would be able to pronounce your name. They may not be able to pronounce Peyton, though, but that for <laughs> sure they'll pronounce Steiduhar. And yeah. did you know that there's a famous soccer player here in the U.S. named Mason Steiduhar? He is a goalie for Orlando City. Thanks for writing, Peyton, and thanks for listening to the show. Absolutely. So that's the show, folks. Tune in next time in two weeks, where it'll be the Tuesday after the election, believe it or not. And we're going to talk about presidents, prime ministers, and leaders of the world names. And we're going to answer the question, can a name make you a success? Mmm, good question. Yeah. Good question. Yeah. Well, stay tuned, folks. This is going to be a great episode. Right. And don't forget to get out there and vote. V O T E, vote. Love you, Mel. Thanks. For Love you, Jen. Doing the podcast with me. And thanks, Bob, for. Uh, calling into our call-in line. We love our listeners, even Bob <laughs> and Bob's uncle. Smedley. Bob's uncle name was Smedley. Take care. See you next time. Bye. Bye.